Yeshua said the tribulation was going to be cut short. However, he never expounds on just how it's cut short. This teaching will shed some light on just how it will all play out according to the prophets and history. Let's talk about it. Hey, this is Off the Cuff, and I'm Steve from TorahFamily.org. I want to start this teaching off by saying there is a short 12-minute video I believe is absolutely paramount in understanding certain elements to the scriptures. That video is titled, How Long Were the Israelites in Egypt? by Nathan H83 on YouTube. We've linked this video to the bottom of all of our daily devotion pages, and it's in the description of this teaching. I strongly encourage you to watch that teaching. It's truly crucial in understanding so many other things in the scriptures. When studying the end times, one of the biggest questions among prophecy students is, how long will the tribulation be cut short to? After all, Yeshua said it would be cut short. Now, while everyone will obviously lean to a certain view, we believe everyone should stay open to other perspectives just the same. If there's one perspective we lean to, it's that the tribulation is cut short at the beginning and not at the end. Meaning, it's cut short from delaying the start and not stopping early. We've discussed that in several other teachings. This teaching will show how the days of Daniel will be cut short to one-third the given time, while the days of the Antichrist will be cut to one-seventh, as noted in our teaching, declaring the end from the beginning. As noted before, if one starts counting on the first day of the year, on the calendar we follow, you'll land on the last day of Sukkot, 1,290 days later, every time, every time. Because of this constant repeating pattern, there are things we're seeing on our calendar this year that can point to other years just the same. So, while we're looking at how biblical dates this year line up, they can do the same in other years to come just as well. Now, these 1,290 days are the same time frame given to Daniel in Daniel chapter 12 regarding how long it will be from when the abomination is set up to when the sacrifices are abolished. But the question at hand is, what if the 1,290 days given to Daniel is cut short to just one-third? One-third of 1,290 days is 430 days. Now, before you start mocking at that, did you know Ezekiel was told 430 days of judgment was coming on Judah and Ephraim? And did you know those 430 days start with Jerusalem being surrounded? Sound familiar? Let's consider what's given to us in Ezekiel. Please remember, the timing of Ezekiel is after the Babylonian invasion. The book of Ezekiel was written in the land of Babylon. In Ezekiel 4, we see he's told to make a clay tablet to represent Jerusalem and put it under siege. Thus, it starts with Jerusalem getting surrounded. Notice how the siege of Jerusalem is to be a sign to the northern house of Israel. Thus, this time of judgment comes on Judah first. This is equivalent to how Yeshua said when we see Jerusalem being surrounded, we would know its desolation is near. In verse 4 and 5, we see Ezekiel's told to lay on his left side for 390 days. A day for each remaining year the house of Israel is to bear their sin. In verse 6, we see Ezekiel is told to lay on his right side for 40 days to show how long the starting judgment would be on Judah. A day for each remaining year the house of Judah is to bear their sin. 
everything starts with Judah being surrounded, and then the 40 days on Judah begin. Just like Yeshua said, this will be the time the Assyrian all but destroys Judah, as explained in our teaching, the Assyrian. Then, after that, the 390 days on the northern kingdom begins. So, we can't just throw this prophecy in Ezekiel to the side as if it means nothing. Yet, so many do. And we can't forget Yahweh makes known the end from the beginning. From ancient times, what is still to come? Knowing this is true, where do we see a 430 in relation to a time frame of Yahweh's people in biblical history? Please consider reading from the Septuagint. Exodus chapter 12, starting in verse 40. And the sojourning of the children of Israel, while they sojourned in the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan, was 430 years. And it came to pass, after the 430 years, all the forces of the Lord came forth out of the land of Egypt by night. The Hebrew Masoretic text omits the phrase, and the land of Canaan. This is covered in detail in the 12-minute teaching referenced at the beginning of this teaching. How long were the Israelites in Egypt? Regarding these 430 years mentioned in Exodus 12, Paul gives even further confirmation to them as seen here in Galatians chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. The 430 years was decreed at the covenant given to Abraham in Genesis. They concluded with an exodus out of the land of Egypt. Knowing the descendants of Abraham were mistreated and enslaved in the land of Canaan and Egypt for 430 years back then, we can now see those who follow the faith of Abraham in the end times will be mistreated and enslaved 430 days as given to Ezekiel, and those days end with an exodus. Now we see Isaiah 46.10 come to life by way of Ezekiel 4 and the 430 days declared by Yahweh. Yahweh chose this specific time to make this declaration to Ezekiel to show what will be coming in the end times by way of days. The judgment given by way of the years was already in play. So this is not about the years. It's all about the amount of days that will transpire in the end times. So how could these 430 days play out in the end times? Well, quite possibly in the last 62 weeks of the 70 weeks of Daniel. As I've noted in our teaching, the blood of the saints and the 70 weeks of Daniel. I believe the 70 weeks of Daniel are just that, 70 literal weeks. And, as noted in the addendum to that teaching, I believe we're actually waiting for the 69 weeks and not the last 70th. In the addendum, I also mentioned how I'm more confident in the last 62 weeks of those 69 will be the last 62 weeks for everything to wrap up. Everything will take place within those 62 weeks. But I was still wondering how the noted seven weeks would fall into play. We'll cover those seven weeks shortly. As noted in those previous teachings, the first day of the sixth month is a day noted in Haggai chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, where we see a word going forth from Yahweh regarding his house being restored. The following day this year is the start of the 62 weeks to the last day of Sukkot next year. So, in this pattern to watch, it would seem the decree to rebuild and restore Jerusalem would come at this time. Then, the 430 days that goes to the last day of Sukkot next year will begin on the fifth day of the same month. The day when Ezekiel saw the idol of jealousy. We have a 15-minute teaching specifically on this, titled, What is the Idol of Jealousy? So, 430 days of judgment on his people goes all the way to the Battle of Armageddon. Then, 
Yeshua delivers his people on that last day, just as we saw a deliverance under Moses in Egypt on the last day of those 430 years. And just as an exodus happened under Moses at the end of the 430 years, the greater exodus under Yeshua, the prophet likened unto Moses, takes place. Just like in the ancient times, we see what's to come. We have a 35-minute teaching specifically addressing this, titled, The Second Exodus. But again, because our calendar constantly has the 1,290 days cycling to the last day of Sukkot every year, this is a pattern we need to watch and be aware of every year from here on out. But there's something else we ran across with the start of these 430 days being the one-third of the 1,290. We also found the fifth day of the sixth month this year is exactly 300 days to Shavuot next year. Now, Shavuot is the day we believe very strongly to be the day the resurrection takes place. What's the significance to the number 300? Well, Enoch walked with Yahweh 300 years and was then taken up. So, just as the 430 years given to Abraham regarding the treatment of his people are turned to 430 days in the end times, we also see the 300 years of Enoch walking with Yahweh before he's taken up turned to 300 days to his people before they're taken up on Shavuot. I also found it interesting how it was 300 men that Yahweh narrowed Gideon's army down to. Could it be within these 300 days that Yeshua picks his 144,000 to ride with him at the Battle of Armageddon? To add to this 300-day element to Shavuot, we know the resurrection is likened unto a birth. In fact, it's specifically mentioned as such. It's the earth giving birth to her dead, as noted here in Isaiah 26 and 66. Ironically, 300 days is exactly 42 weeks and 6 days. Now, modern medicine considers a pregnancy full term if it's between 39 weeks, 0 days, to 40 weeks and 6 days. So, basically up to 41 weeks. At the same time, a post-term pregnancy is defined as a pregnancy that's extended to or beyond 42 weeks. But again, that's modern medicine's definition. While it may not be the norm because modern medicine will try to induce labor before the 42nd week, going over 42 weeks for a pregnancy does happen. And we can't forget, Yeshua said he would raise his people up on the last day. Shavuot is the last day of a 50-day count. So, from conception to birth, these 300 days will be the time of refinement for the bride, a time where Yeshua is formed in each of us. No matter where he places you for this time, you will be refined. If this theory is correct with the 430 days starting on the fifth day of the sixth month, as noted in Ezekiel 8, 1, when he saw the idol of jealousy standing, then this will be when the delay of the first five seals come to an end, as noted here in Revelation 10.6. But so far, we've only discussed the 62 weeks. What about the other eight of the total 70, especially the other seven weeks of the 69? I realize the general understanding for the 70 weeks of Daniel are that all 70 weeks are in sequential order. That's just how our minds like to process things. But we need to remember, the text doesn't say this. We simply assume it as such. Though we're told there are 70 weeks decreed to bring things to an end for the people and the land, it's the 69 that brings it all to a close as noted in verse 25. 
it's at the end of those last 69 weeks where we see Yeshua comes. When Yeshua crosses over the Mount of Olives and enters Jerusalem, it's game over. But we see this takes place at the end of the 69, not the presumed 70th, which makes me wonder about the other week, the week that many assume is the last and 70th week. But again, we're told it's the 69 that brings it all to an end. The Greek mindset puts everything in a sequential timeline. Regardless of the order, the common Greek mindset tries to lay them all out back to back. Yet, quite often, things overlap in the Hebraic thought. Just as we discussed in our teaching, the hour of trial, regarding the seals and the trumpets. This seems to be especially so with the 62 and the 70 weeks, as they're noted together and appear to be separate from the other week. And with those two sets of weeks bringing in the return of Yeshua to Jerusalem, this gives the impression that single week by itself starts everything off instead of bringing it all to a close, as many assume. But if this is the case, where are the other seven weeks of these 69 placed? Well, we already know of a seven-week count in the scriptures. You might be thinking, we do? Yes, actually, we do. The Feast of Weeks, Shavuot, Pentecost. So, could these seven weeks noted in Daniel 9 be those seven weeks to Shavuot? Is this just a coincidence? I don't think so. But why separate those seven weeks if they're a part of the 62? Why not just say there's 62 weeks? Why take special note of these seven weeks if they're actually within the 62? I believe there are possibly two reasons for this. One, again, we have to think Hebraically, not with a Greek sequential mindset. He's showing the 62 weeks will consist of this seven-week count to Shavuot. And two, I believe these seven weeks are being highlighted as they quite possibly will be the time when the Antichrist rises to power. Those seven weeks will be the time Yahweh's people will see the Antichrist and be delivered from him when they're raised on the last day, as Yeshua said in John 6.39, John 6.40, John 6.44, and John 6.54. Thus, the earth giving birth to her dead at the end of the pregnancy, the last day in the counting, being taken up like Enoch at the end of the 300, when he takes his bride to Mount Sinai, then defeats the Antichrist in the battle of Armageddon before he returns to Jerusalem at the end of the 430 days. I realize many would say that these seven weeks could be the birth pains then. However, as noted in our teaching, the birth pains, the birth pains come at the time of the birth, not weeks or months beforehand. That being said, just as the latter weeks of a pregnancy become the most uncomfortable for a woman who is pregnant, the same will be true here. So, the Antichrist rises to power before the resurrection. Thus, what Paul gave in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, a set of verses I have found myself going back and forth on for a long time now. But with everything we're seeing now, well, I believe it's getting more clear. Starting in verse 1, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy, report, or letter supposed to have come from us, saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs 
and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Please note the timing Paul gives here. He said the return of Yeshua wouldn't come until two things transpire, until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The Greek word for rebellion here is apostasia, where we get the word apostasy from, meaning to turn away from one's beliefs. If the persecution begins back at the fifth day of the sixth month, I promise you, there will be an apostasy from the faith well in play by this seven-week count to Shavuot. The word apostasia is only used one other place in the scriptures. It's found here in Acts 21, 21, under the same premise of turning away from the ways of Yahweh. So, with the apostasy in full swing, the man of lawlessness will most likely be revealed around Passover and begin his reign by the end of the week of unleavened bread. As noted in other teachings, his rule is cut to one-seventh his given time. So instead of 42 months, his reign will be cut to only six months, ending on the last day of Sukkot, the day of the Battle of Armageddon. There's so much to be considered here. However, the more I study, the more I sincerely believe we should be keeping our eyes open for the Ark of the Covenant to come out. When it does, I truly believe everything will begin within days, at the max one or two weeks. And then we will see Jerusalem getting surrounded, just like Ezekiel and Yeshua said would happen. And that will be when it all begins. As you can see, there's biblical evidence for the 1,290 days of Daniel being cut short to 430 days, exactly one-third the given time. Now, will it turn out this way? Well, as I always say, time is the ultimate test. But I sincerely see this theory as something to keep watch for in the years to come. Well, that's all I have. Think about it, pray about it, but more than anything, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Until next time, Shalom.